the King Killer Chronicle, what are you doing with your life? And I'm certain there are people that do find the book boring. Manderley is iconic. And I hated that book so much. Vibes. Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with no nuance, just vibes. So I know this title and this thumbnail are a bit cheeky. Just want to be clear up front that I don't mean to suggest that any of the books that I'm going to talk about today have no nuance, have no complexity, are not intellectual in any way. But basically, I'm going to be talking about books that I think really just like deliver on vibes, <laughs> which isn't to say that they don't deliver on other things. I mean, a setting is important, but I don't, to me, vibes is different from a setting because setting is, I, I don't know if there's a way to explain this, so setting is like the bricks and mortar and vibes is just like the, the mood, the tone, the, the lighting, <laughs> if that makes sense. So yeah, I think, I think that's clear. I don't think it's a very high concept video idea. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just gonna have a list of books that I think have incredible vibes. First up is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which is like one of the number one reasons I wanted that mega disclaimer of like, that does, I'm not saying they don't have any new odds, even though that's literally the video title, no new odds. But so Rebecca, if you've never read it or never heard of it, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier is, uh, it's a classic, uh, more of a modern classic. She wrote it in the 1920s, I wanna say. And uh, it, it is a, a character driven story and so with a character driven story you might think it's not gonna have incredible vibes <laughs> but it absolutely does this follows the story of your unnamed narrator who is the young new bride of the master of this house called Manderlei, uh, or the owner of this house called Manderlei. and it's it's a, a a creeping slow moving kind of psychological i guess thriller i mean thriller i think oversells it a bit like if you're expecting a thriller that like what we're used to like Gone Girl it's not like that but it is this like psychological thriller is the best word I can think of it's basically like you're following this young woman as she's unraveling the mystery of Manderley and about her husband <laughs> and about the his first wife and what happened to her in Manderley and Manderley the house is basically a character in the story like beyond just having a prominent setting beyond just having vibes and the location be something that is noteworthy it is like literally a character in the story i feel like no list of books that's talking about like setting being important which is kind of what vibes is would be complete without rebecca manderley <laughs> is iconic. So I mean, I highly recommend this book. I think it's one of those classics that like, it doesn't read like a classic. I mean, it does read like a classic. It is slow and it is wordy, but I think it's more highly digestible for a modern audience than a lot of other classics. Like it's enjoyable to read. Not that classics aren't enjoyable to read, but a lot of classics can be like a bit more effort <laughs> to read. I don't think that Rebecca takes a whole lot of effort to read and enjoy. Um, so I recommend it in general, but also Manderley, so many vibes. Next up I have The Bear and the Nightingale or the Entire Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. I picked the least vibey cover to hold up mainly because it was nearer to hand and also because I never ever show this cover off and I wanted the excuse to um, but this is bothering me. The more vibesy cover because I mean yeah this one doesn't 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 demonstrate vibes so much. Here's a child screaming outside and I need that to stop. So yeah, Bear and the Nightingale, I'll put this one down. Bear and the Nightingale delivers these vibes, this tone. Um, if you've never heard of it, never heard me talk about it, never read it, the Winter Night Trilogy is sort of Russian folklore just in general being retold. So it isn't any one particular Russian fairy tale that's being retold, but it is a sort of it, like, it's kind of like historical fiction because it is taking place in Russia, not a fantasy world inspired by Russia but it's incorporating folklore as like active elements. Characters from folklore and like concepts from folklore, from Russian folklore, and the main character. It's kind of like the battle of like pagan folklore versus Christianity and like the main character being very much in tune with sort of like the little gods of nature and that, and butting heads with the Christianization of Russia. She's fine with people being Christian, but the Christians are not fine with her leaving bread out for like the little like house elf essentially, uh, Domovoy, but all these like little Russian spirits. Anyway, so it's, it's an excellent trilogy, but like the vibes. It is so much like Russian nature, Russian winter, Russian food even. It is, it just absolutely, you just like sink into this fantastical magical Russia. And then in the later books, like it isn't just, the first book takes place more in a rural area. And then later you're in Moscow and that's once again, 
the Moscow vibes are off the charts. This series definitely feels like vivid. Like it feels like you are being transported to a magical Russia. A dark Russia, an unsettling Russia, a sometimes scary Russia, but a magical lush Russia nonetheless. Next up I have a book that I I mean, I must have talked about it in the wrap up when I read it, but I don't think I've really ever talked about it that much. Um, and that is House of Salt and Sorrow by Erin A. Craig. Uh, this is one of the few more recent YA releases that I really, really enjoyed. And I remember specifically like when I picked this up because I had just, I had gotten this book and another book around like Halloween time. And this had just come out. That's why I got it not because I thought it'd be a good Halloween time read. I think it came in a book box, but I got like this other YA book that I thought was more likely to be my jam. It had like a skull on it and it was about these like Welsh skull monsters and I hated that book so much. And that one was I was expecting to get creepy vibes from and whatever and I was like that was terrible. So I picked this up and I remember thinking like this is instantly way more like it's not at all what that other book said was gonna be. So I wasn't expecting the other book to have a seaside theme but like that creepiness that I was expecting from the other book this immediately delivers. So House of Salt and Sorrow. This book is a retelling of a fairy tale that is not very frequently retold, that being Twelve Dancing Princesses. And this takes place, um, this is more, I feel like people don't, or at least I don't often associate like creepy ghost stories and stuff. I usually just think of, oh, like decrepit castle or old Victorian manor or the moors. But I mean, quite frankly, like seaside things can be quite creepy, like an old abandoned lighthouse <laughs> um, and that kind of thing. So this is definitely like seaside creepy. And the vibes are off the charts. Like, you, I feel like when I was reading this, like, I just, the sense of, like, the dampness, the salt, the, the I can, like, hear ocean waves crashing, this sense of dread building because of this sort of macabre, ghostly mystery that this book is all about. It is just extremely atmospheric. And I had a great time. It's not, like, the best book I've ever read, but I had an absolute, like, wonderful time just reveling in the creepy atmosphere that this book was just absolutely delivering. So if you want seaside creepiness, <laughs> this book will deliver. Next up I have the book series that actually inspired this whole video idea. That is The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. The Raven Cycle is it's just maximum vibes. I mean I know this video is about books that have vibes so I know I'm gonna say vibes about every single book and that must be getting slightly annoying. I can't help it. That's what this video is about. But the Raven Cycle, like when I think of vibes, I just think of the Raven Cycle. Slash when I'm reading the Raven Cycle, all I think to myself is just vibes. And I can't put it any other way because yeah, like it's a cool setting. This takes place in Virginia, but in like very rural Virginia. And there's a lot of like, there's like a magical forest. And there's a lot of, I mean, mainly it's the magical forest. I mean, everyone else is like living in a house or dorms or whatever. But that's the thing about my used to be writing writing. Like, so the, the female main character, Blue Sergeant, she lives with her mother and her two aunts in this house because they're all psychic. So it's this like messy cluster of chaos because she lives with psychics. So the vibes of Fox Way, of 300 Fox Way, where Blue Sergeant lives, it's kind of a little bit like the burrow, like where the Weasleys live. Except, I mean, it's totally different than the borough, but in terms of like this place that is kind of otherworldly a little bit because you have the psychics and is very chaotic and messy and it is this kind of like, you have to love the mess <laughs> because we're all living here and it's kind of chaos and we're not super rich so everybody has to share and it's a little crazy. So there's a lot of vibes in 300 Fox Way. Caves Water, the magical forest, just off the charts magical, like vibes. I feel like I can smell the greenery. I can hear the water rushing. Like it is just vibes. And then the characters themselves, Maggie Stiefvater's writing, it's less what I would call characterization and more vibes. Each character to me is just, they each have their own specific vibe. And that is the character. And I don't know, I think that might be why some people don't like Maggie Stiefvater's writing. I love it. But that's why I feel like the vibes are off the charts because it isn't just like the setting has mega vibes. The characters have vibes. Their clothes have vibes. Every place they go into has vibes. Like the cars they drive have vibes. The magic has vibes. Just, it is just the vibiest of vibey series. So if you're not down with that, she's not the writer for you. But that is what I love about it. And it is, it is just so atmospheric.
at all times. <laughs> Next up I have Circe by Madeline Miller. Oh my god, all the books I'm holding up today are so shiny. Um, I have a less shiny edition, but I thought I'd show off the pretty shiny one. Circe, if you don't know, is a retelling of the story of Circe from Greek mythology. And Madeline Miller's writing, I mean, I might equally have held up uh, Song of Achilles, but I do feel like Song of Achilles, also by Madeline Miller, also a Greek myth retelling. While that does deliver a lot of atmosphere and vibes, I think Song of Achilles is more action-packed, if that makes sense. Whereas Circe is so much about sort of like the island that she lives, and what that's like and her own kind of vibe and it's just more kind of slow and contemplative than Song of Achilles and for that reason it feels more vibey to me than Song of Achilles because Song of Achilles again it absolutely has great atmosphere I don't want to say that it doesn't but this book is spending more time just kind of being in a place without plot moving forward, if that makes sense. And I feel like that makes the book sound really boring. And I'm certain there are people that do find the book boring, but I don't think it's boring. I think it's just more contemplative. And for that reason, it gives you more of an opportunity to kind of just savor the place that it's in and kind of sink into all of that. <laughs> I feel like I'm really not articulate today. I'm so sorry. All I can say is vibe. Cersei is an excellent book, just in general. I highly recommend it, but also, Vibes. Next up I have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Another extremely shiny book. <laughs> Lainey Taylor's writing also so similarly to Madeline Miller's two books. Like I could have put the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series on this list. It is also jam-packed full of vibes. But I feel once again, like between Song of Achilles and Cersei, I feel like Strange the Dreamer, the duology, is slower and it is more contemplative and it does just spend more time reveling in the place that it's taking place. Whereas Daughter Smoke and Bone, it absolutely has incredible settings, but it is more like plot driven, action packed, like let's keep it moving. So even though it's it's like, wow, um, you're not really stopping to take in the wow. Whereas Strange the Dreamer, actually similarly to Rebecca, uh, where I said like Manderley is like a character in the story, Strange the Dreamer, likewise, place almost becomes a character in the story because the very beginning of the book, and I think all of the, the like promotions for the book also like brought this in into it about the place called Weep. I mean, like the bottom of the book jacket says, welcome to Weep. It's like most book jackets, I don't feel like make a point of welcoming you to the place that they are taking place without spoilers. And I feel like this is one of the reasons why people find it difficult to explain what Strange the Dreamer is about because you don't know very much going into it and you can't know very much going into it because knowing almost anything about it spoils it. <laughs> but the place called Weep is a place that kind of like disappeared. It's this lost city. And the main character, Laszlo Strange, is obsessed with finding this lost city, finding any scrap of information, anything he can find that is just even proof that Weep existed. So again, I can't really say anything more than that, but like Weep, <laughs> the city of Weep, is like a character in the story for that reason and so there's a lot of focus put on everything to do with that place and everything to do with people that would have come from it or how it the the fact of it being there and then being gone and how that makes one feel and i mean outside of weep I mean, the library that laszlo strange works in where he's digging up information about weep also is very atmospheric as a library not as like whimsically magically atmospheric it's a library but like Lenny taylor's writing style Oh, it's very different from Maggie Steve Otter's writing style. I don't want to say that they're the same, but similarly to Maggie Steve Otter, this like this approach to giving everything a lot of vibes. <laughs> so there is never any mundane part of anything that Lainey Taylor writes. Every single part of it is like technicolor. <laughs> so Laszlo in the library researching is is lush and imaginative and beautiful and whimsical. Even the most sort of like boring, straightforward part. But yeah, Strange the Dreamer is just a feast for, I want to say a feast for the eyes, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's a book, so you can't, it's not in front of you, you have to imagine it. But like, it is like a feast for your mind's eye is the best way I could explain it. So highly recommend, again, just in general, but also many vibes. Next up, I have Obligatory, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. If you don't know, anything about me or my channel, then you may not know that I'm a big, 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 big fan of The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. This is a little different from the other books on my list because I do feel like it is... <laughs> vibes aren't like the most important thing about it, but I do, when I think about Name of the Wind, when I think about reading The King Killer Chronicle, 
a lot of what stands out to me, a lot of the enjoyment that I derive from it is the setting, is this cozy vibe. Lots of taverns and cider and ale and musicians playing in a tavern where you can just sort of like smell the wood paneling and it, it, it very much places you in every setting that Quoth is in. Like be it the tavern, be it the school, be it wherever he is, you're, you have a very distinct sense of how this place looks, how it smells, how it feels. You feel like you're walking through this world with Quoth. So it isn't like the magical whimsy and wonder of Strange the Dreamer, for example, but it is nevertheless very much like sinking you into the tone and feel of this world, albeit a more grounded world than Strange the Dreamer. But yeah, I just, I couldn't talk about vibes without, without Name of the Wind, which again, just in general, highly recommend. If you haven't read the Kingkiller Chronicle, what are you doing with your life? Yeah, read the Kingkiller Chronicle. But also it makes a great autumn read because of the autumn vibes. <laughs> and last on my list is a book that you may not have expected from me. And that is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is a whodunit. This is probably, if not her best known, it's I think one of the, her most well-reviewed or more universally enjoyed. But I enjoyed it a lot more than Murder on the Orange Express, which was a big letdown for me. And Then There Were None is like the quintessential closed circle mystery. It is isolated closed circle mystery. Like when, I feel like every single book that has an isolated, isolated closed circle mystery, you know how like every fa epic fantasy is like the next Game of Thrones? Every isolated closed circle mystery is the next And Then There Were None. So if you haven't read it or heard of it, it is it's not like one of her series with like a famous detective like Poirot or Marple or anything like that. This is just a standalone and there's this island where all these people are invited to come to this island and none of them know each other, none of them know why they've been invited and they all start dying one by one and everyone on the island is trying to figure out who is doing this and why. And it is just this, this tiny little remote island where you can't make contact with land because it's also pre-cell phone days and it is it's it's so creepy and well done and that sense of panic <laughs> and isolation and the loneliness of being on this island like even if there wasn't a murderer it sounds like a pretty isolated lonely depressing place to be if i'm quite honest but then there's a there's clearly murders happening and you're next and it is just so well done and the entire time i feel like you you feel like you are on this remote deserted island um and that like a ticking clock of like who's next who's next who's next is ah oh, it's, it's just so well executed this is so so good classic for a reason highly recommend again probably a good halloween time read because it's quite creepy also many vibes <laughs> so yeah those are all the books on my list of books that deliver on vibes <laughs> let me know in the comments down below if there's any books that you would have added to this list if there's any books that you would take off of this list if there's any books that you would have expected like knowing me for me to have put on this list. <laughs> uh, whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.